tech support supervisor from Fuel Tech USA. Today we had Jermaine Bigelow's awesome nitrous grudge car on the dyno. And uh, he's been on our dyno before, but he came back in search of more power. Did in encounter a couple issues, but we were able to figure out what was going on and, and incrementally through the day, we you know fixed certain things, changed certain things in search of more power and uh, a more effective way to get the car down the racetrack. So it's definitely a good thing to do when you're building a new car, or even if you have a car that's been down the racetrack and you're just trying to find that, just that little bit extra, bringing it to our dyno is a, is a good thing to do just so that you can, you know, just squeeze a little bit harder and, and find that last little bit. Sometimes it's hard to do when you go to the racetrack. If you're wrenching the track, you have different changing track conditions and weather and all kinds of other things that could be affecting how you're developing your tune-up where on the dyno here you literally get the same racetrack every time you have no traction problems for the most part the weather stays pretty normal throughout the day it it does change in temperature and that kind of thing but you're still kind of on the same playing field the whole entire time when when we have a nitrous car on the dyno the first things that we do besides checking how everything works making sure all of our sensors are working correctly making sure our nitrous bottle pressures we know which bottle it's it's on making sure each kit is working properly clicking every solenoid every injector all that kind of stuff we then go into doing motor pulls so that way we can develop the fueling and, and ignition timing for a naturally aspirated engine so that it runs as quickly and as cleanly as possible through the rev range and also has a very, very tight O2 sensor to the target that we're asking it to hit. So on, on a nitrous engine, believe it or not, the motor tune-up is the most important part. The fueling that you add for your extra nitrous is basically a, a direct compensation over the top of the main engine fuel map. So if that's not close, then everything else is gonna be off and all your numbers will be weird and it turns into a nightmare at the racetrack. That is one thing that you know we, we spend a lot of time on and. Uh, especially when you bring your car to the dyno here, we're gonna make sure that that stuff is right, make sure all your numbers and everything makes sense for you. So when you go to the racetrack, you can use all of the other methods and formulas that you've always used. Or even if you learn a new method or, or, or formula or anything from us, and you can continue to do that with numbers and values that make sense as you go to the racetrack. Once we get the engine tuned, naturally aspirated without any nitrous or any other type of stuff going on, we'll then start to progress through however many stages of nitrous that you have. If you have one stage, we go right into doing you know one stage. If it's progressive, we'll show you how to set up the progressive stuff, fueling, timing, and how to do all the ramps and everything. If it's a pro nitrous style where you just stack kits on top of kits, We'll show you how to use and, and utilize the Pro Nitrous part of our software. And sometimes we even go over power management throughout the dyno pole because in reality, how you run the car down the track. So sometimes once once we have really good baselines, we can then start to do even a couple pulls with some power management involved with controlling how the engine accelerates and, and how the, the engine hits the torque converter and all that kind of stuff to simulate a, a better idea or representation of how the car is actually going to go down the track. As we go through each nitrous stage, we then go through perfecting the fueling and ignition timing for each nitrous stage until ultimately we end up with everything on. The car's got big gorilla flames hanging out of it on the dyno, making big power. Everybody gets excited and you know then everyone's all amped up and ready to go to the racetrack. So that's one of the best things and, and coolest things about the nitrous cars on the dyno. They're really, really exciting to be around and it's a lot of fun for everybody learning how, how to tune and how to work on them, as well as seeing the results at the end of the day. He had a really good day on the dyno. It was it was a lot of fun being able to work on, on a, a high powered car like this. It's a nitrous car, so it definitely has its challenges with uh, keeping everything alive, making it survive and making as much power as possible. They're one of the most violent combinations out there as far as being able to apply power quickly. They're, they're always cool and fun for people to watch. They're, got flames coming out of the headers and it's an exciting vehicle to be around. So hopefully guys you uh, enjoyed it and we'll see you guys next time.